All right, so you guys know I've been talking about a new tractor, and uh, I've been giving you model numbers, and you might not know what what they are. So today, um, and you'll see in the second part of this video what I was doing today, but you can probably imagine what I was doing today. Um, I thought I would make like an entrance to this video and uh, show you guys, you know, you can put pictures to model numbers. So, when I started looking at a new tractor, I kind of found a Massey Ferguson. Um, ever since their 5600 series, you know, I've never, I don't care who you are, you're always looking at new tractors. Um, just keeping an eye on them. And, um, I liked the looks and stuff of the 5600 series. I said, you know, when I buy me a new tractor, I need something like that. So I watched them come out with that. Then they updated to the 5700 series, and they came out with the 4600 series, and the 4700 series now. So, I was just looking at Massey Ferguson, and then I subscribed to Varenberg Implement, or whatever it is, out of Missouri. They're a Massey Ferguson dealer, so I was keeping up with all the models they were coming out with. Well, they came out with these two models, the 2700E series and the 2600H series. 2700e is like a compact tractor um, but it's a utility tractor but it's a small frame it's built on the compact tractor frame um, they offer it in two models a 2706 and a 2705 uh, ones I can tell you here these are the I got prices on these uh, it's on the back One's 48 engine horsepower, one's 57 engine horsepower. So I, you know, I was like, that tractor would do what I need done. I can, and then I can do a little bit more with it. I can do a little bit of farming with it. Well, then they got this series, the 2600 series. It's a larger frame utility tractor from 45 to 74 engine horsepower. So I was kind of stuck between these two. Um, I went to a dealer. And I got a price on both of them and talked to him about them. And he said, this one would be more suited for me. And I'm looking at the 2600, 2607 uh, tractor with a loader, four-wheel drive. Um, this comes standard with two remotes. Um, and I'm looking for a, a third function on them. That's what I want. And the third function, with, from what I can tell is not like a regular third function with two buttons it's a single button and then you tilt your well, you would use the tilt function for your bucket to operate it so you can't tilt and use your third function at the same time um, I don't like that this is a mechanical shuttle tractor so you push the clutch in every time you go forward to reverse um, you know that's all right uh, Kubota has a hydraulic shuttle so you don't have to use the clutch this tractor doesn't have a regen, but it does. It has no DPF, no DEF. Um, it uses some kind of diesel oxidation catalyst thing. Um, but from what I could see on it, there is no regen buttons. So, I was looking at these two. I decided, you know, I want something like that. So I put that one in the keep pile. I took this one and I set it off to the side. You know, I don't want, I don't want that one anymore. So we got this one. So I'm looking at other tractors around this range. So I went to Case. To their Farmall A series. And I looked at the 70. The 70A. 70 because it was close to the engine horsepower. Not the same, but close. The uh, 2607 is 74 engine horsepower. This is 70 horsepower, 61 PTO horsepower. Okay, so it's less horsepower um, and the weight. I always look at the weights. This is a 4,000 pound tractor, four wheel drive. This is a 5,800 pound tractor. Big difference there. Um, this tractor was gonna cost a little bit more it was close. Actually, it was really close to 
what this tractor is going to cost me. And the guy actually gave me a quote for the 2606, but another $1,500 he said would be about the price. And with the third function, you know, they're about the same price. You're getting more tractor with this one. So, again, the case and the New Holland Workmaster 70, they're both out because they're the same tractor, just different color. So that's out. It's like, well, let me look at Kubota. So, I started looking at the M7060. And Tada Farms on here. If you don't watch him, go check him out. He's pretty close to me. Uh, he's got a 7060, and he's doing uh, ground engaging work with it, farming with it. He's got a 14 foot cultivator. The cats are fighting over here. Um, he's got a 14 foot cultivator, three bottom semi mount plow, seven shank chisel plow, uh, six row corn planter, and like a 12 foot bean drill or whatever. But he pulls it with a 7060 with a cab and a loader. So I was like, well, let's. Let's look at the Kubota, and I actually did not know until today that they had an 8560 and a 9960. The brochure I was looking in was from 2018, and it only had listed. It had the 5660, the 6060, and the 7060 listed in it. Well, the 7060 is the same horsepower. Get out of here, cats. Same horsepower as this one, 74 and 64. So, it's like, well, that's a good, good match. Like I said, this had a hydraulic shuttle. Um which was nicer than this, and I believe their third function is the two-button third function, if I remember correctly, in a video I watched. Um, this does require regens, though. So, I like this tractor, no regens, but this has some more creature comfort. So, I went today, and that's when I got this brochure, and was looking at prices on these, and uh, this tractor is a lot more than this tractor. Spec the same. No cab, four-wheel drive. Um, I didn't ask about a third function because they had a 7060 on the lot with a loader. And he just gave me the price on it. And it was about $3,000 more than this tractor. Um, I would have to add weight to this tractor to make it equal this one. I think it's like 800 pounds. So, um, but with the 7060 came the option for a cab can't get a cab on this and actually for it to fit in my building I have to take the exhaust and make it a downswept exhaust. Um, I was using my cow barn as a limiting factor on the size of tractor I got which I don't want that to be the limiting factor because I'm not going to always use that barn for livestock. Um, it's just currently what I'm using it for and I wanted a tractor I could get in there and clean that out with but I also want a tractor that I can grow into. Um, this year we're looking at doing some row cropping so I want a tractor that I can do row cropping with. Um, about the 70 horsepower range. So um, I got to thinking, you know, a cab would be nice. And if I'm going to buy a new tractor, I might as well get a cab. So then I started looking at cab tractors. Um, again, the 7060 with the Massey Ferguson. I have to go to a 4600 or a 4700 series tractor. I don't have a book on them. I haven't looked to see what prices are new on them. Um, used, you know, they're they're st they're more than this tractor. I can find someone can find some in this price range, um, but I haven't looked into it. And again, they're they still got the goofy third function, and uh, I have heard some horror stories on the 4600 series. Haven't heard too much about the 4700 series, um, but. When you go to a cabbed model of this tractor, pushes it way up in price. You're talking over $10,000 more than this one. So, while I was at the dealer, the Kubota, it was a Kubota New Holland dealer. He's like, well, have you looked at New Holland? I said, I have. I looked at their Workmaster 70. He said, well, they got... I said, I, I am looking at cab tractors now. I didn't start looking at cab tractors. But he said, well, they got a Power Star series this used to be he put t4 on there because this used to be the t4 series they call it the power star now and there's all your options and that's about what the engine horsepower is of each of them me i would be looking at the power star 100 or the power star 110 um in this range well actually to compare it to these i'd be looking for the 75 but 
we'll get into a little bit more of why I'm looking at the comparing the 100 and the 110. Um, this series of tractor, the Kubota, they're actually changing it to the M4. Uh, but I am told they are keeping the 7060, but the M4 uh, is going to be a more deluxe tractor, and that's jumping the price way up. So that brings me into the the Power Star, which is a little bit um, more expensive tractor compared to this. I didn't get a price on this, but judging by Tractor House, they're, they're pretty expensive. Um, so he told me to look at that. He said to look at older tier T4s. If I want to use tractor, I was strictly looking at new, but now I am looking at a couple year old tractors. Um, he also gave me the T5. Now the T5 is a little big, um, I thought. He thought so too, because I'm looking more of this size. But he also threw in this, a Kubota M5 uh, 111 they actually had sitting on the lot. He said, now have you looked at the M5s? I said, you know, I was thinking about an M5 because if I go to a cabbed Kubota, I'm in the class of the M5 and I want to compare prices of the same class of tractor because I want to get the most out of the money I'm spending, you know. I'm spending X amount, I want the most tractor I can get with X amount. Um, he said, well, look at the M5 and that's when the T5 came into play because they're about the same tractor. I'd look at the T5 110 to compare it to the T or the M5 111, which would compare to the Power Star 100 or the Power Star 110. The 110 is just a little bit bigger than the 111. Um, and in the video you'll see posted directly after this, I was in a M5 111, I was in a Power Star 100, and I was in a T5. Um, I think it was a 120. I don't remember right offhand, but uh, I think it was a 120. So you guys will get to see them. You don't think I'm going to show you paper tractors and not real tractors. At the end of this video, you'll see, I think it's like a seven-minute video of some tractors. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm looking at an M5 111 size tractor. Um, he told me, he said, if you go with an older M5 111, he can actually get me this tractor, low hours, with a loader. These cats are freaking out, man. Uh, with a loader for the same price I can get that one. Also with a cab. So I get a cab, I get, you know, a deluxe transmission, all the goodies for the same price as that one. Which, this is brand new, a $60,000 tractor. So, um, we'll see. This tractor is a little bit less than this tractor, but considerably more than the Massey Ferguson. So, I'm still up in the air with what I'm going to do. I'm not going to pull any triggers anytime soon. i got some things I want to pay off before I will allow myself to buy a tractor. I'm looking about June um, to really hit hard, but I want a good idea of prices and... Uh, specifications and stuff of what I'm doing um, and if I decide to go with like a New Holland or something I'm going to check out the case because like I said they're the same tractor different color different name um, I did look in this book it doesn't apply to anything I looked at it's just the only book that I had on the A series for Farmall I looked at a 75A which at the time I was looking I wasn't looking for a big tractor I was looking for this size. That was the only thing he had on the lot that was close to that size, but it was too tall. Um, it was way too tall. You know, I was looking for something that could fit through a seven and a half door, and I've decided that this tractor would fit through a seven and a half foot tall door if you put a downward exhaust on it, but I wouldn't be able to turn to clean my barn out. So I've decided, you know, I'm not going to let the barn limit me. I can use a pitchfork. So I can back my manure spreader in there. I can pull the tractor in up to the cab, throw manure in the bucket. You know, I'm not, it's not the end of the world. It's not the first time I've cleaned it out by hand. It's not the last time, but so that's just the brochure the guy gave me. It doesn't even have a 75A in it. It's a hundred horse and bigger, but that's where I'm at on the new tractor. Have no idea what I'm getting. That's an idea of what I'm looking at. 
Um, like I said, I need to get a book for a bigger Massey Ferguson to look at and uh, see what they can get me on some used tractors. If I go a little bit bigger, I'm going to go used. If I was staying in this range, I would buy new because there's not much of a price difference buying these used versus new. Um, but he couldn't give me a, a good price on the 7060 because, like I said, they are changing the model numbers and changing the features. Um, so he said the price was going to go up and you'd be pushing, you know, 50000 And I said, that's out of my price range. I don't want to spend that much. I gave him a price range and he said, that's the number I needed. He said, I can get you a used one of these within that price range. And I'm like, if you can get me a used one of these in that price range, I'm probably going to go with that because... Uh, like I said, that's a $60,000 tractor, and my price range is nowhere near that. Um, so if he can get me a used tractor in that price range, the M5-111 is going to be a big, or a, a good good choice there. Uh, this does take def. The 7060 does not. That does not. So, But these do have weird stuff on them. But anyways, that's enough boring you with that stuff why don't we get on to looking at the real tractors and some of the stuff in the real tractor video is going to be a repeat of what i just said but oh well at least you get to see some tractors and the inside of some cabs so here we go so what else do you do in ohio when it's negative what is it six degrees out and you got nothing better to do you go tractor shopping so i'm uh I'm tractor shopping here and actually there's his other no that's not even right what we're sitting in here is a Kubota M5-111 cab tractor and uh, it's a little bit bigger than what I was looking for but I've been price shopping and it seems like if I go uh, used I can get a little bit bigger tractor um, so that's what we're doing he actually recommended this tractor because I was looking that's an M6 on the other side of it is an M7060 without a cab um, that's what I came here looking at I was actually looking for one with a cab um, I wasn't gonna go open station tractor but I was limiting myself to my cattle barn cleaning it out and I don't want to have to limit myself to one thing so because um, I'm not gonna have that barn forever and I don't want to limit my tractor size to that barn. Uh, I can use a pitchfork. So I thought about going up a little bit bigger tractor with a cab. Well, I actually wasn't thinking about going up in size. I was going to stay around that 70 horsepower range. But the Massey Ferguson tractor um, that I was looking at, which is the 2607, you cannot get a cab on. To get a cab, I have to go to the 4700 series. So that opened up a little bit bigger range in other brands. Um, if I go open station tractor, it's going to come down to Massey Ferguson or Kubota. Um, they're actually changing the Kubota tractors, which is up in the price. So, um, and if I'm going to pay as much as they're wanting for the 7060, which is now going to be the 9950 or 9980, something like that. I don't remember the number. Or 99, it might be the 9960. Um, it's going to put it up there to where he said you can buy an M5, either 111 or 091, for actually cheaper than those, and actually about the price range of the new Massey Ferguson. So if I can get a bigger tractor with a cab and the buddy seat for my buddy who's sitting in the truck because it's cold, um, I want to do that. So. Uh, what I'm looking at is emissions, what everything has for emissions. I'm looking at weights and, of course, horsepower. I want to spend, you know, if I'm spending $40,000 on a tractor, I want to get the most tractor for $40,000, you know, or whatever the price may be. That's just an example. Um, so that's what we're doing. He showed me in New Holland. There's two over there. There's a Power Master. Or Power Star 100, which is about the same size as this tractor. Actually, I think he said it's a little bit smaller um, frame size. It's got a buddy seat. It's a nice little tractor. He showed me a T5, 
what is it, a T5 120 or something like that? I can't see from here. That's got a nice cab on it. It's a little too big, but it's, I think he said it was the close comparison to this. There's either that or the T4, um, which the T4 they replaced with the Power Star, is what he told me. So he's looking for tractors for me. Um, a couple years old with maybe 700 hours on them at the most. So I'm just comparing cabs basically right now. I like the New Holland cab, but I think the Kubota cab had a little bit more room and uh, it's got a, there's more windows. It, it seems it's a bigger cab height wise and everything. I'm kind of tall. So that's what we're doing. I thought I'd give you guys a glimpse into what the, what we're doing today. I can show you these tractors while we're here. Might as well show you what's going on. Here's the uh, M511 tractor. Uh, over here's an M6. It's quite a fancy tractor. It's too big for what I need, period. Too fancy for what I need. Nice tractor though. Here's the non-cabbed version with a loader. I guess that'll give me an idea how the loader joystick's gonna be in the cabbed version. If I look at this one. Whoa gonna be bent back but this is that actually this is still an m6 it's not even an m5 so it's still too big but this is what i was looking at m7060 without a cab i want to get a price on a cab and non-cab because if i go with the non-cab massey ferguson 7607 this is going to be a competitor so what i like about this is it's hydraulic shuttle not manual shuttle like the Massey Ferguson and I can get this with a 12 by 12 instead of an 8 by 12 and I think the third function is not one of the diverter valve style where you hit the button and then curl and uncurl your bucket for the third function to work which I don't want that I want the actual button style third function where you have two buttons to open and close your third function got the buttons for it but it doesn't it's not plumbed for it this is a power star 100 brand new check it out that guy in the dealership is like why is this idiot going from tractor to tractor i've done this three times but it's got the buddy seat here's the, the dash in it the kubota had bigger the cab was wider at the front and it's a taller cab um, so, but this one, what I was talking about with the buttons is the style I'm looking for. I got my phone backwards. Yeah, this has two buttons on it. Say so this one would close your grapple, that one would open it. The way or, uh, Massey Ferguson's is you hit this button and then you tilt your bucket to operate it. So you can't multi-function with the, with the uh, grapple, but you can't tilt your bucket and grapple at the same time it's either one or the other but that's not a totally uh you know that's not a deciding factor it'll help in the decision along with the uh the hydraulic and manual shuttle type deal so that's what we're looking at i'm really looking at uh, massey ferguson's and kubota's though um i'm gonna look into the new holland and the case in the size i was looking at I was definitely not going to go with the New Holland or the Case. They were 1,500 pounds lighter than the Massey Ferguson, and the Kubota was only 800 pounds lighter than the Massey Ferguson. And I'm basing all my stuff off the Massey Ferguson's. I know the Ferguson's a little bit better as far as specs and stuff. I've been looking at them for quite a while. So the only tractor I really have to look at next is the Massey Ferguson 4600s and 4700s and get a price on them. So, uh, I'm not going to do that today. Casey wants to go do other things. So, we're going to do Casey things now because we just did Logan things. Check that one out. It's got tracks. So, actually what we're going to do here, while we're at the dealership, we'll just drive through real quick show you stuff. There's actually a 2010 sitting right there with a loader. And it's how a 2010 should be. Not like my goofy 2010. It's tall, weird, short little tractor and see if I can fall on the ice hold my hat in one hand and my phone in the other Ugh. 
Uh, we're gonna give the YouTube people a uh, tour of the dealership. Make YouTube videos. Oh, we're stuck. There we go. Fingers was frostbit. Yeah. That. There's big John Deere. I'm not gonna get a John Deere. I'm not doing the green game. That's a 6195R. Here's a TG285. That's too big. She said I couldn't have the, uh, the New Holland T9, which is like a quad track. Here's a 2010. Okay. No, we're going to focus on the dirty window. But see how short that tractor is in the front end? It's not any beefier than mine. But and that is... I think that's a diesel tractor. You can't tell from here. But that's how I think a 2010 should be. Here's a 5220, here's a 4701. That's the say that's the new version of my excavator right there. That's a KX040-4. So that's all we're gonna drive through. Oh back there's just combines and stuff. But anyways, that's what we're doing today. We'll catch y'all on the next one.